JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today's the 11th of April 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's recorded session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So... The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, um, as always, a quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, uh, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our GFD Bank website, and specifically our GFD Research page. So if you click here on the top and you go to our uh, GFD Research page, page um, yeah it'll take you uh, here and uh, you, I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves guys so uh, but yeah uh, check us out here and uh, I hope you uh, I hope you found it you find it useful now uh, jumping into the charts guys very quickly so Nikkei 225 so after we got a hold up near that 21 day EMA and this is what I talked about last week after we hold, got a hold up here because we rebounded from this area uh, um, we now are pushing back down, and we pushed back down already. Um, we're still trading in the red. I mean, the, the, the time that I'm recording this um, this video, we're still uh, we're still trading here on Nikkei. Um, one thing that I need to get rid of here is the um, this uh, Fibonacci uh, no longer needed. Um, yeah, and uh, at the moment, as you can see here, this 26,764 level, uh, the low of last week, is still providing support. Now, although we had a bit of a drop below it, yes, however, um, however, mm, we came back above this hurdle and we're still trading above it. So, or actually, I would say even bang on on that line. So, um, if, you're, if you want to see further declines, then yes, certainly uh, a nice good drop below this level would be needed again um, and then yeah we could start aiming um, well one of the levels that we could start aiming for will be could be this one the low of the 17th of March of, of 2022 near the 26,153 level uh, for the upside if you're looking for some higher levels now one thing we can do here is first of all we can redraw this uh, no longer needed, that upside line is no longer needed, but we can stick to this downside line taken from the high of the 30th of March. Now, if you're looking for some upside, then yes, a break uh, above this 27,215 level would be needed. Uh, and also at the same time we could see the you know the 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 index traveling back above that uh, 21 day EMA however we do have this downside line which could still play out so in other words if you're looking for some upside then maybe at least wait for a uh, break of this uh, downside line and then yeah we could go for some higher levels uh, Shanghai composite guys so um, this one is uh, feeling the heat today, and yep, it is uh, drifting to the downside. So not very, um, not very good news here. I mean, for um, for the, the Shanghai Composite, um, the Chinese uh, inflation numbers came out today, and those uh, came out slightly higher uh, than, than than initially forecasted. So yep, not to mention the previous number, of course. So yeah. Um, the year-on-year -year number did incre increase, so going from uh, plus 0 0.9 to 1.5 to plus 1.5, of course. So, yep, the, there are some concerns that, yeah, the, uh, the, the 
PBOC might start stepping in as, as well as as other banks in the in the you know across the globe so in order to maintain their inflation uh, but um, yeah at the moment guys I mean uh, from looking at from the technical side even um, so far it's working out and if you remember last week I talked about this 3226 territory I said that if we drop below it and stay below it then my next target will be this 3159 or 60 zone I would say even let's round it up here a little bit and that's marked by the low of the uh, 28th of March. Now, um, you can see here that um, yes, we are in, uh, on the right track here. It seems that um, we might end up testing this area, maybe not today, but um, maybe this sometime this week. Um, however, if that gets, you know, if that gets broken, then of course, yes, further declines are possible. More, uh, more sellers could start joining in. But um, let's not rush into anything because why? Uh, I'm saying this is because I don't want this to end up being somewhat of a range here guys so something like this basically where yeah it could um, it could end up, end up being something like this and uh, then we could see a bit of bouncing around here on this index however let's not um, let's not rush into conclusions yet uh, for now I'm just observing the um, observing the price action here and listen I'm aiming for this 3160 zone if um, if it holds a nice rebound could be possible if it fails if um, if it breaks the year and then yes further declines could be possible yeah um, the German index tax um, yeah this one is uh, uh, well I would say not uh, on Friday it did climb higher again tried to move to the upside but it got a hold up near that 21 day EMA and uh, and uh, yeah got a hold up here still trading below this uh, this downside line and well, as I said to you previously that in order for me to go for lower levels I need to see at least a drop somewhere below this 14,100 territory and if we take a look at the cash index right now we'll see that we are actually not far from this area now so we've reversed back down so um, the so we'll probably have a nice opening gap here to the downside and if that's the case well um, maybe just maybe this could be seen as an island reversal however not an not where you would like it to be of course but um, nevertheless um, yeah uh, let's keep an eye on this hurdle instead probably just you know let's keep that island reversal idea maybe a little bit uh, out of out of this uh, equation but um, if we do drop below that 14,100 area area then yes I will go for the downside my next target will be this 13,578 zone uh, jumping into Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys. So, uh, Friday, yep, we had a good push higher, but once again, this downside line provided resistance. And uh, then we drifted back down and we actually fell back below the 100 day EMA. So, we failed to stay above all of these EMAs. And uh, what I said to you previously as well, that in terms of the downside, if you're looking for some lower levels, then uh, 34,353 territory, that's what I'm keeping an eye on for now. Um, if it drops, if we if we see a drop below this, then well, this probably will confirm a nice uh, descending triangle pattern. And at the moment, the cash index is sitting at around 14,000, or actually, sorry, 14,000, that's I'm still looking at the uh, the German DAX. Um, we're currently trading at around 34,539 uh, 34, area, something like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, basically uh, below, nicely below, um, below Friday's close. So, um, in a way, as long as it stays inside this pattern, I'm just going to continue observing the price action, guys, because... <clears throat> In a way, it could still, you know, rebound and you know push higher. However, for the upside, I need to see a, a break of this downside line at least. Uh, now, jumping into DXY, the dollar index. So, uh, my beautiful 100 level got reached on Friday, guys. So, uh, but but um, my issue right now here with this uh, index is the fact that yes, we 
climbed higher we reached that uh, 100 uh, level uh, we hit that we even actually overcame it um, and then but the end of the, by the end of the trading session we kind of drifted back down and stayed below this 99.97 zone 99.98 97 approximately around there today we're seeing another push higher but once again this barrier is providing uh, resistance and let me remind you what that level was in the past here this oh sorry not this one uh, this one right here this is the um, the high of the 25th of May of 2020 so um, if this continues somehow to provide resistance then maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible if we do retrace and once again test this 99.42 level but struggle to drop below it then well we could get get ourselves a nice little curve here back to the upside if the index uh, falls below the 99.42 area, then yep, I'll aim for that 21 day EMA and so on and so on. Uh, now jumping into gold, guys, gold is bouncing around and on Friday, look at this. I mean, this is what I keep saying sometimes, you know, when, when we do, for example, have a potential um, descending triangle pattern, but um, what I said here is that uh, still we need that confirmation break as always. And this is one of the reasons why, because we went in, went, went here and, and broke through the, uh, through this downside line, through the upper side of the triangle. And uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's not looking very, very well here for the sellers, I would say. Um, we've clear this downside line so in a way now the commodities it seems like it's prepared to move higher but I will take a bit of a careful approach here and uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna um, keep my eyes on this little hurdle this 1950 area guys so um, you can see that it, on Friday and even today did provide that area did provide good resistance now if we clear this area and we jump above it then yes, I'll go for, uh, slowly I'll go for the upside, I'll aim, aim for that 1966 zone. However, of course, my preferred area, uh, uh, a breakout area for the upside is this 1966 zone. Now, um, if, like I said, if we uh, push through this 1950, yes, I'll start aiming slowly to the upside. Um, I'll aim for that 1966, but if that gets cleared, now that's where it, it could become a little bit more attractive for even a few more buyers. For the downside on this one still, I mean, uh, I'll take a very, I'm gonna take a very conservative approach and I'm gonna wait for a drop below this 1918 zone. And then yes, lower levels could be met. Uh, WTI oil, so um, yeah, drifting nicely to the downside. Um, again, still trading below this 98.54 level. Look at this. I mean, I talked about this level previously, guys, and so far it's doing the trick and it's doing its magic and continuing to either provide support or resistance. In our case, right now, it's providing resistance. So my next target will be this 93.56 zone or this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 2nd of December of last year. So it's pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna just um, aim for um, aim for the downside. However, if we do uh, break this downside line, we pop above it and we pop above the 21 day EMA as well, then yes, I will maybe consider a move to the upside. Um, now jumping into Ethereum, <clears throat> um, so, of course, the stronger dollar is not the uh, the big helper here for ETH against the USD, as for the other as as well as for the other cryptos. But again, uh, let's go from what we have right now. I mean, of course, anything can change very quickly in our days. Um, so if you're looking for some downside, guys, at the moment, yes, um, in the very near term, it seems that, that we could move a little bit lower. However, again, a confirmation break is still needed. So I need to see that drop below that uh, 3,143 zone. Um, a nice good drop below it. Yep, would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, potentially more sellers could join in here. So 
long story short um, if you are uh, if you are looking for some downside then yes at the moment looking at this pattern uh, it seems like a, uh, a bearish flag of some sort here uh, but a confirmation break is still needed so I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that the only I only the only problem with the downside I, that I have is that we are still holding on to this 200 day EMA and it's still kind of providing that good um, support now However, if we're looking for some upside, uh, then this is where I need to adjust my some of my levels and probably for the upside, I would like to see at least a push, at least a push above this 3,314 territory marked by the high of the 8th of April and then yes, we could go slowly to the upside. Uh, AUD JPY guys very quickly on this one so this is a bit of a mess so basically I need to redraw this because um, we had our you know we reached uh, our 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci we rebounded strongly from it I talked a lot about this pair guys I mean you can see last week we you know we rallied again and almost managed to reach the uh, highest point of March uh, but just fell by sh fell shy by a few pips and uh, kind of drifted back down so now we're kind of uh, jumping around here so one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the uh, drawings and we're going to start fresh now first of all probably start off is to maybe mark a um, a short term upside line let's see if this is going to work out no this is not ideal guys I mean this is yeah this is, has been already broken now the one the other one that kind of pops into my head is something like around here now I do understand that we you know it might be not a the most attractive one however um, this could still be an interesting one later on for example if we do drift lower so you see that we have distanced ourselves a lot from the um, from the all of the EMAs um, especially the 21 especially the 200 one uh, but um, yeah, eventually this will have to correct at some point to the downside, guys. At the moment, it seems that um, we're keeping an eye on the equity world. If that suddenly starts selling off, well, I mean, maybe the yen buying could, you know, could resume. Um, however, at the moment, it's of course it's it's looking a little bit more positive than negative. Um, nevertheless, I would like to see for this one, I would like to see maybe a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 28th of March. And a nice good pop above it, yeah, would confirm a forthcoming uh, higher high, or actually it would confirm a forthcoming higher high on a break of this barrier. Let me just grab a, a line very quickly. So this highest, there we go, let, let me just bear with me. So this one right here, the highest point of March, if I'm not mistaken, yep, the, the highest point of March. So if we pop above this, then yes, um, not here, there we go, can I just finally get this one there we go so the highest point of March is roughly around that 94.32 zone a nice good pop above it yep would can uh, would it may attract a few more buyers now again I do understand the skepticism here I mean we had a quite a quite a steep up move here already so maybe a bit of a, a larger retracement here could be needed mm, certainly I agree with you with that idea the only thing is that at the moment we have not seen that uh, signal for a potential correction from the very short term perspective what you can do here is for example you can keep an eye on this low the low the 7th of April near the 92.41 so a nice good drop below it may lead to some lower levels and uh, we could then aim for that uh, low the 31st of March here uh, near the 90.76 zone which is around that 21 day EMA so it all could be nice here uh, all could work out nicely here so uh, so yeah, um, at the moment I would say be very careful here. Um, yes, um, it's um, it's still kind of looking quite positive. However, uh, certain confirmation breaks are still needed. So for me, let's say to go higher on this one, I would actually you know take a very conservative approach and wait for a push above this 94.32 level just because we had already quite a steep up move so maybe you know a bit of a retracement here could be possible as well however for that uh, we need also you know some criteria that should be met uh, and uh, for the downside a drop below this 92.41 zone is is required and uh, then 
uh, then we could aim for that 90.76 um, or even below that. But let's let's go slowly on this. Uh, jumping into USD JPY, this one is on fire, guys. Of course, the weaker yen and the stronger dollar. This is what the result that we're getting. So um, I talked about this pair last week, and I said that if we pop above this 124.30 zone, then yes, I'll go for some higher levels. Then, well, as you can see here, we did that, and uh, I'm continuing now to aim higher. My next target, of course, is the the highest point of March, uh, which we I think we already are kind of slowly managing to reach very quickly. So yeah, uh, let's keep an eye on it. So 125.11, that's what I'm uh, keeping an eye on. If we clear this, if we uh, clear this barrier, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in. So uh, if you're looking for the next level, guys, this is probably where I'm going to jump into a monthly chart. And uh, yeah, let's see up, uh, adjust, adjust, adjust very quickly. Um, so, okay, so you can see that we are approaching the highest point of uh, 2015, guys. And this is where we are right now. We're not far from that area, 125.85 zone. That's the highest point of uh, of 2015, and uh, if that gets cleared, guys, well, I mean, the sky's the limit for this one. Look at this. This is looking quite interesting, I would say. And uh, uh, my only little issue is that um, we might see, you know, we might get it might do, it, it might not be very quick as you think. For example, and we might travel higher here. We might test this to uh, the highest point of 2015, and then, for example, it could get a whole up we could drift back down so it you know this whole kind of process let's say of potentially breaking out and staying above this to the highest point of 2015 might take a while uh, because this look at look this is a monthly chart that we look at so <clears throat> it could take even sometimes several years depending on how this is going to play out but anyway guys at the moment uh, yes I'm keeping an eye on that uh, highest point of 2015 and then we will take it from there I uh, need to jump back into daily. So uh, USD CAD um, also pushing or at least trying to push higher. Um, you can see that again, once again, it's uh, it climbed above that um, that 1.2587 level. I talked about this area last week, and we are still above the 21-day EMA, so that's great. Um, so in a way, we're leaning a little bit more towards the upside. However, um, this is USD CAD, my second second least favorite uh, pair. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it, it has sometimes a mind of its own. So keep your eyes on the oil market. If oil suddenly starts strengthening rapidly, then well, we could see USD CAD actually reversing sharply to the downside. But at the moment, I'm leaning towards the upside. Yes, as long as it's going to stay above that 21-day EMA, I'm going to aim for that 200-day EMA. Uh, GBP USD. So yeah, guys, uh, very interesting level right here. We are near this key support zone on Friday. We uh, this support zone near the 1.30. Uh, um, on Friday, we managed to reach and breach. Uh, that level, um, but failed to stay below that psychological 130 zone. And uh, today it seems that we might get another test. However, uh, can we drop and stay below that uh, below that hurdle? Well, that's a you know that's a bit of it's going to be a bit of a waiting game here. So, however, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside, guys. And yeah, if we drop below that um, below that psychological 130 zone, my next target is the 1.2854 area marked by the low of the 2nd of November of 2020. Uh, for the upside, um, for the upside, I. Basically, I I will take a very careful approach here <clears throat> and very straightforward approach because um, I would like to see a um, a push above this 21-day um, EMA and uh, then yeah potentially more buyers could join in. Apologies, there, guys, for um, going blank here a little bit, going going silent. Uh, had to clear up my throat a little bit, but anyway, coming back to this. Um, so Euro JPY, guys, very quickly. This one, look at this, boom. Um, I, last week I talked about this one and I said that as long as we remain remain in this pattern, uh, in this kind of uh, in this triangle pattern, we will I will remain neutral. Um, and um, uh, last week uh, we were kind of 
def testing the lows here, uh, the lower side of the triangle, and we're also we were also testing that 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci. So I said that if we drop below this 23.6 and stay below it, then yes. Uh, we'll uh, we'll consider you know further declines. We could go lower, but um, as you can see here, I mean the opposite happened, and this is why you always need to wait for that confirmation break. Um, and here, yes, boom, there we go. And the 135.47 level is. Um, um, is now violated and uh, at the moment what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue aiming higher guys as long as we stay above this 135.47 if we start dropping back below it uh, we'll probably have to revise uh, re-evaluate re everything again uh, Eurocad um, Eurocad is um, still um, still trading. Yep. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's it, it it's a bit of a, an annoying pair. I would say it's kind of traveling traveling back now above this um, lowest point of, of March. Um, and as you can see here, last week it traveled above that area, and on Friday it managed to stay above that area. So um, and today we're rebounding from this area, and we're trying to make our, make our way higher. Um, to be honest, if we do continue to trade above that uh, high, uh, lowest point of March. Um, yes, I'll aim for this downside line taken from the high of the 23rd of fe February. I'll aim for that 21 day EMA and if it all provides good resistance, yep, um, uh, another maybe slide could be possible. However, maybe this could be the time for a, a bit of a break here. So that's why long story short guys, for now, as long as it stays above this 1.3673 territory, yes, I'm aiming for the upside but only up until this 21 day EMA and this uh, downside resistance line. Uh, and finally, Euro USD. Um, so uh, a bit of a gap here to the, it was, there was a bit of a gap here to the upside, as you can see here. Um, what's interesting here is that, um, yeah, we, we have climbed back above this 1.0891 territory. So I, I spoke about that level previously. Um, this was seen for me as a nice good area of uh, support. Uh, we did drift lower on Friday, but as you can see here, we kind of formed a bit of a pin bar, uh, a bit of a reversal signal. So, um, yes, this is where I'm going to consider here. What I'm going to say is that if we stay above this uh, 1.0891 area, if we continue trading above it, I will go for the upside, but I will be very careful near this 1.0945 level. If that gets cleared of course and yes my next target is the 21 day EMA but if it doesn't get cleared then uh, another slide here could be um, could be possible and then yes my next target will be this uh, lowest point of March near the 1.0806 uh, level now uh, for now, um, like I said, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one here. And uh, if we are uh, looking for some, if we are looking for some uh, upside, well, at least I will wait for a push back above this 21-day EMA. If we're looking for some downside, guys, uh, keep your eyes on this 1.0891 area. If we drop and stay below it, uh, this this highlighted one right here. Then, um, like I said, I'll aim for that lowest point of uh, March or even below that, and then we'll take it from there, guys. So uh, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your views, your likes, your comments. So um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'll need, it depends on how this day is going to go for me, but um, I we might get back to um, live sessions tomorrow. So, but um, yeah. Uh, Either way, guys, still try to catch my videos around uh, 6 o'clock GMT time, maybe a little bit after that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll take it from there. But I hopefully, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to uh, do a live session. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much, guys, for watching and listening. Really appreciate that. So, uh, so yeah, have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe, guys. And I'll see you later. Thank you very much and bye-bye.